Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage. I told you guys that I was going to the MOT this Monday. It's not Monday today, it's Tuesday. So uh, let me tell you what happened. Because I did actually manage to go to the MOT station this Monday. And the last video I made was, I think it was Saturday evening. And I got the car down from the lift Sunday evening. And I then realized that this was going to be the first time that it was driving with all the new parts. and. Uh, and maybe I was a bit too optimistic, but it actually drove pretty well. I had some issues with the rear brakes, still do actually. They do brake all right, but I have a hard time getting the handbrake to function proper. And it's very important for the MOT in Denmark at least that the, uh, the shoes doesn't bind. Because if I adjust them so they just bind a little bit, then the handbrake is sort of all right. But if they don't bind, well, it's really poor, but I managed to, to get them to work all right for the MOT. I have a feeling that they might become better over time because that's normally the thing that happens because the shoes needs to bed in. And being it's the rear axle, they don't actually break that much from normal driving because the most, the most braking is done by the front wheels. So it could take some time. So I hope that it will be better over time because I can't really figure out why the handbrake is this weak. Yeah, I don't know, but it is all right for the MOT. And being a 4x4, you can't really put them onto the brake stands. In Denmark, we have brake stands where you put two of the wheels, one axle into the stand, then it spins up and then you can brake and then you can measure the amount of braking force and the uh, and how straight it is braking and all that. That's not possible on a 4x4 like this because it doesn't want to turn the front axle without the rear. Um, some MOT stations got uh, brake stands that works for 4x4 but not mine. But then they actually, and I have never seen that in use before, they picked up an old equipment from the back of the, uh, of the store. I knew it exists but I've just never seen it. It's a G accelerator meter. It's a device that measures g-force, so you could put it into the passenger seat, then go out on the road, get up to speed and then brake, and then it will measure the braking force. Um, so they did that, both of them driving around in my Niva. It was quite a funny view, and it passed the braking test. But it did not pass the MOT this Monday because the rears were, were dragging too much at that point, so that was a no-go. I forgot to check the braking light. One of you even commented that I need to check all that kind of stuff and I always forget about it. Everything worked except the braking light on the right side. Then it also had an issue with the horn not working. It turned out to be the switch in the steering wheel. And then the last thing that turned out to be a bit of a headache for me because I bought, I bought these test number plates that worked Monday and Tuesday, so I had this small window to get the stuff fixed in. But the problem was the tires. I, had, I, had, I hadn't noticed, but the tire size were not the same. The fronts were 175, 85 and, and 16 inches, and the rear was 185 slash 75. It's not a big difference, and I hadn't noticed it. It's not something that pops into your eyes, but it's a, it's a no-go in Denmark. And I don't want it either. So I had to go and fetch two new tires in the same size as the rear Monday evening. I had, had to do quite a long drive to get them. It's a bit of an odd size. And then I had to get my equipment from my storage facility to change tires, the old tire equipment that I have shown you before. And uh, it's such hard work because it's not really mounted to the floor proper. and. It's an old school device, but it works and I got the tires fixed. And then Tuesday, which is today, I went to the MOT station again and it passed, which is awesome. It was a fun experience to go with this car to an MOT station because especially when you import a car to Denmark, you need to assess the overall condition of the car, take pictures of the condition because they have to calculate the import tax and all that. And um, 
no surprise, this is in the worst category you can imagine because of the lacquer or lack of lacquer. One thing though, which is really annoying, but it's not a big surprise, is that the, the trailer hitch assembly back here was not approved. And I sort of knew that it could become a problem because it looks a bit homemade. As far as I know, this is not the only car with this kind of setup. But the inspection side didn't like the way it was mounted to this. Uh, I think it's an aluminum bumper, actually. I had no plans for doing any kind of heavy towing on this car, just the regular going to the dump with, a, with some stuff. So it was not going to see a lot of weight. But the problem is, if they are going to approve it, it will be approved for quite a big amount of kilos and wouldn't really be safe to use it with that amount of pressure. And that's annoying because I really need a car with a trailer hitch. So at the moment I'm looking at possibilities to get a proper one. They don't seem to be very expensive actually, but the car needs to go through another MOT to be, to be approved with a hitch before I can use it. And of course the car should be able to go through an MOT to, tomorrow or next week because it just did, so it shouldn't be a problem. But it is costing some money, both the hitches, both the trailer hitches assembly is going to cost something and the new MOT. I actually ended up paying close to 200 euros for the uh, for the inspection because it's so complicated and big when it's an import situation. And still I'm waiting for the tax, which is going to be around a thousand euros to get it on Danish papers. All that I knew, but maybe I'm going to save some money on the hitch for a while at least. But that was a shame, but no big surprise. <laughs> but the experience of driving this car is, I cannot drive it for more than what I have just done, going to the MOT station and back again, again and testing the brakes on the road and stuff like that, that because the test number plates does not permit me to go around to just joyriding around. So I haven't driven it that much, but the amount that, that I have been driving it has been really fun. I, and you probably know that, tend to drive some pretty funny cars and different cars. And normally on my local roads, people are waving and smiling at me when I go by. It's a bit different with the Lada Neva. But most of the people that I have met has had a bit of a nervous look when they looked at this car until they realized that I was driving it. But <laughs> maybe it's because it doesn't really have any number plates. But I think the overall look is making people wonder what what, what is this and what is this car doing? But uh, <laughs> that's kind of fun also. The drivability of this car is as expected. I was not expecting a comfortable car, but it is driving rather nice actually. There's a lot of noises. I got a whine from a gearbox or transfer case or something like that that could be normal, could be excessive, I don't know. One problem though that is annoying is the fourth gear. If I put it in fourth gear and accelerate, there will be no problem. But as soon as I release the, the throttle and go back on the throttle, it will just kick out of gear instantly. So I will have to hold my hand on the gear stick and manually keeping it in fourth gear to keep it in fourth gear. It should be a common problem as far as I know. I think it's a trust washer between the, uh, the uh, in the bell housing that is most likely shattered that needs to be changed and then that problem should go away. It could be other things as well. That's just what I've heard could be a common problem. So I might have to take that off or, and fix it. But this is a five speed. It's not original a five speed, but this has been fitted with a five speed. The five speed should be should apparently be quite a quite weak unit, especially if you use the the, the, the fifth gear. It seems to be advised to only use fifth gear at 80 kilometers or maybe even 90 kilometers per hour. If you use it at lower speeds than that, then the rear nut on the, uh, on the, on the input shaft will come loose and you're not going to have a good time if that happens. So what I'm actually wondering about right now is that I have a four speed standing in the back maybe I should just fit the four speeds instead of the five speed because I'm not going to go at over 80 kilometers per hour on this car anyway because it's a speed limit and I don't think I'm gonna go to the motor motor or highway on, in this one. But I haven't really decided. Either way, the gearbox will have to come out no matter which solution I choose. But of course it could also just be a shifter linkage issue, but um, 
it seems to be a pretty common thing. But I can't wait to test this car out in the, uh, some off-road situations because take a look at this. I just wanted to test it. The articulation of the suspension with the wheel almost two feet up in the air at the front. The rear axle is still just planted on the ground. So right now it hasn't lost traction on any wheels, even though it's really tilted to the side. I think this car is pretty capable in the rough. So anyway, this was just a short video with a lot of talking, but I know that a lot of you guys has been writing me, asking me how it went. And of course, I can understand why. I think a lot of you are just as excited as I am about this car. So I just wanted to put out a video really quick. I can't drive this car before the tax is being calculated. That will be in, that will take around one to two weeks. So hopefully in a couple of weeks time, I will be able to drive it legally on the road. And then of course, I'm going to make a video on how it drives on the road and all that. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. And thank you for the support I get on Patreon. It means a lot, especially at the moment. And uh, well, see you in the next one, whatever that will be. And thank you for sticking around for the Lada saga. <laughs>